Hi Space Cats, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and today I'm here with a very special guest, Francesca MacDonald. Um, she's going to be answering for us 23 questions about ESA. So um, let's just jump straight into it. So to start off, um, tell us, who are you? Hi Maggie, so I'm Francesca McDonald, as you said. Currently my role is Moon Exploration Scientist and I'm in the Human and Robotics Spaceflight Exploration Directorate. I'm based at the ESTEC site of ESA in the Netherlands. So before I came here, my background was in geology and planetary science and a focus on geochemical analysis of planetary samples to, to investigate the origin and evolution of the Earth-Moon system and the inner solar system. Okay, and um, you did a research fellowship like I did, um, but yours was very different to mine. Can you tell me what a research fellowship is? Yeah, so the, the research fellow program, it originally started um, under the former European Science Research Organization, um, but it's been maintained in ESA in its current state. And it's, it's a program aimed at providing young scientists and engineers um, who already hold a doctorate or equivalent degree um, a way of doing research within space science, space applications or spacecraft technology. That sounds really exciting. How long are these research fellowships? They, they're a two year contract, but there is the potential to renew up to a third year. So which sites at ESA, there's loads of sites at ESA, um, as we know, uh, which ones of those offer research fellowships and which one are you based at? Yeah, Susie said there's, there's lots of sites across Europe. So um, as I said before, I'm at the, the Netherlands sites. So that's the kind of science and technology centre and the largest one. But there's there's the other sites. There's ESAC in Spain, Esrin in Italy and ESOC in Germany. And then there's also a, a few research fellows out in Germany and in the UK at the sites they have there as well. OK. And who can apply to these fellowships? It's eligible to um, anyone who's completed or is close to completing a PhD in the relevant technical or scientific discipline. Preference is given to those that are uh, within five years of having received their, their PhD. But you do also have to be a citizen from one of the Eastern member states or one of the European cooperate, cooperating states. OK, um, so when I did my fellowship at ESAC, the selection process was actually really long. We had to do a long uh, research proposal and there were several rounds of the interview. Can you tell us a little bit about your selection process? Yeah, so it's similar, there are perhaps not met quite so many stages. So there's the, the online application, you can go to the Careers Opportunities Recruitment website for, for ESA. And there you need to provide CV, a motivation letter, and then as you say, a research proposal. This is, it's not too long, sort of about four or five pages long. And then if successful, you'll get called in for an interview stage, at which point I travelled to the, the Netherlands site and um, had to deliver a 10 minute presentation. And then there was an hour long uh, sort of panel interview afterwards that really then honed in on, on all the questioning from there. And then it, was, then it was a case of waiting. There wasn't another round after that. So you said that some of the associative uh, states um, of ESA can apply. Can any non ESA member states apply? Unfortunately, no, you do have to be associated with one of those member states or the cooperating states. External to that, it's not possible. Um, what do you think makes the ESA Research Fellowship competitive? It's, it's a really good working condition. It's a great campus you go to. It's a multicultural environment. And, you know, compared to similar kind of postdoc positions, it's actually quite quite well paid. So um, it's, it can be really inspiring in, in that sense as well. And there's lots of other benefits you can ha have, particularly if you're an expat living in, away from your home country. So you, you get sort of certain security, but you get access to the environment as well. I completely agree. Part of my fellowship, I did a lot of traveling. Is there any travel funding in your fellowship? So there's travel funding associated with actually getting yourself to, to ESA. There's support in what they call take up duty and end of duty. So it's helping you move to and from the country you'll be located at. As for actually missions are called, the travel associated with research, there is the opportunity, but you do have to sort of go through a, a management hierarchy. So it's um, it's a little bit case by case. You'd, you'd um, prop in your proposal as to where, whether you'd need that travel and it would be authorised case by case. Okay, um, and similarly, is there any research funding? 
Again, it's not as clear cut as it might be in the traditional academia environment. It would be a little bit on a proposal uh, case by case funding. There, there's certainly, I think it has to be recognized if you're going to do research, it's going to require a certain amount of funding. But um, within the science directorate, it's a little bit more of a clear route there. Outside of the science directorate, for example, in the HRE directorate, it's a little bit, again, a bit more case by case. Fair enough. Um, so at ESAC, uh, like you said, I was in the science directorate. We had three fellows each year um, and, and another like three fellows at the STEC site in Netherlands as well. Um, how many research fellows do ESA typically take? Um, across all the sites, I think it's around about 60 fellows each year and then that'll be split out. So uh, predominantly the, you do find a large proportion of these within science directorate, but you find them across all the other directorates in technology and engineering and um, other science areas as well. That's quite a lot. Um, what's your typical day as a research fellow? Yeah, it could be quite variable. It wasn't really a typical day because um, whereas in perhaps a science director, it's a purely focused a little bit more on doing the research. Where I am, it's a bit more of a 50-50 a balance between doing your dedicated research and then actual more work experience type, type roles. So I could be, you know, in the lab or with the samples and doing the, the core research part, but otherwise I could be really contributing to ongoing studies, in my case, those looking at lunar exploration and being in consultation with the science community um, external to ESA in the process. You could be organising workshops, you could be supporting other trainees um, that could also come for research at, at ESA. Um, and also just general ad hoc questions. Typically, research fellows, they bring expertise and skills that aren't already represented at ESA. So, so once people find out you have a, a specific knowledge, they, they will come to you with questions. So yeah, it can be quite rewarding, actually. Great. I think one of the most um, interesting questions that people will be interested in finding out then is about your research. What do you do? So my title in the research fellow role was Lunar Samples Research and Applications. So a little, little bit wordy. Um, but on the Aztec site, there was not really an in-house capability to be um, doing the handling and research of extraterrestrial samples. So I, I came in and I've, I've helped set up a bit of a capability receiving lunar samples from the Apollo collection. So I'd be writing proposals to ask for a loan of samples from the Johnson Space Center so we can actually start handling and working on some of these these Apollo samples to really address some of those, those outstanding science questions that we still don't quite know about the, the history of the moon and the understanding its place in the inner solar system and what it can also tell us about, about the Earth. So that, that was more what my research focused in on, but I was also supporting a, a project called um, Apollo Next Generation Sample Analysis. And I'm still supporting that in my work role now, and this is where they're opening um, it's a, a US-led consortium, but with international representatives of science and engineering, and they're opening these specially curated, still sealed samples returned from the moon. And we're focusing in on how would you extract gas from a vacuum sealed Apollo 17 core sample that to this day has not been opened. What's the best ever sample you've worked on? Oh, I mean, Prior to my role here, I actually, part of my PhD and the other research roles, I, I also was privileged enough to handle these samples. So I, I previously looked at these kind of olivine rich mare basalts, they're called. So these are uh, erupted um, magmatically onto the surface of the moon. And I, I did a lot of analyses on these. And in those samples, there's also cases where you have um, microscopic glass beads that can come these like orange and green and purple colors there they're really un unusual and they represent a specific type of volcanic activity on on the moon so you're sort of seeing a change in geological history there and then now to be handling some of these um apollo 17 samples as well is is really interesting it's it's, it's very cool <laughs> that's really cool cool so um did you have a manager to guide you on what you had to do or like did you just explore what you wanted to do so, yeah, I was put into a team that had a, an official line manager and it was quite a diverse team that I started in as, as the research fellow. But you'd be incorporated to go to the monthly meetings, get integrated and understand an overview of the, the activities there. For the research part, I was paired with a senior colleague who, who was also doing work within the moon exploration field. And 
So they, they became almost like a, a supervisor mentor, but what they, they largely leave you to self-organize and really have ownership of your research. You That's the skill you are bringing, but then they'll they'll supervise you more on the work experience side of it and guide you through where you can participate and, and contribute to some of the worst work aspect. Nice. I've always felt that like ESA is a big family. Everyone is so helpful to each other and looking out for each other. Um, what was your favorite thing about working at ESA? Okay. Yeah, I think I sort of touched on this before. It's just this really culturally diverse environment. You've got so many countries working together. I mean, it can be quite complex, quite difficult, you know, sometimes having to find that solutions and the communications, but it's a really, really good experience. And you're working across disciplines. It's scientists, engineers, strategists, like communications. It's not it's not just one one route you're you're sat within. And you get to apply what you've studied in a, in the in the work environment and towards like actual challenges associated with the space industry. So it's, 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 really, it's really complex, but really rewarding to sort of see how this, this complex machine works and to, to make some contribution to that in a positive way. Absolutely. Um, are there any misconceptions that people have? Yeah, it's, it, you can't assume it's a regular postdoc position. It's not like being in academia. The closest you might get to it is a little bit when you're in the science directorate. It's a bit more you're doing most of your time is on the research. Um, but as I said, with the role where we have, it's 50-50. Um, your time's distributed differently. Funding and research opportunities are a little bit different. You may not necessarily has much, have as much participation to conferences as you might experience in academia, but if you if you're into the, the kind of applied research within the, the work environment, and then that can look quite good on the CV as well as, as rewarding, then that, that's an alternative part of it that, that is beneficial, but it's, it's not as core research focused as, as if you were to stay in academia. What would you do after a research fellowship typically? There's lots of different routes. So some can be recruited as staff, as I, I've been lucky enough and have found out. Um, others then will return back to traditional research and go back to the more academic in environment. But you know, you, you do a lot of um, interaction with industry and international organisations. So there are other routes and other um, networks that you start to build to create other opportunities as well. Yeah, absolutely. I've gone back into academia after my fellowship. So it's interesting to see that some people stay at ESA and, and do completely different things. Um, what do you think about the transition into ESA staff? How was that for you? Yeah, I mean, I didn't actually get to the end of my research fellow. I, I, I was about 18 months in when the opportunity arose and there was a lot of synergies with the, the role that was advertised and the work aspect that I was doing. So I, I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go for this. This is a potential career route. So actually it was it was similar. You just apply, you do the interview. So I found it quite a, an easy to transition in that sense. I suppose had it been a, a more different role, then maybe it might have been a little bit more difficult. But actually that that transition it's it's it was it was good. You you already know some of the people, you already get, got some good ideas to bring. So it was a good experience for me. Great. Um what do you think was the best benefit that you obtained from doing the fellowship? Apart from like getting you into the ESA staff position. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you get um, just great communication with a broad community um, because you've got all the international partnerships interaction as well. So you, as well as um, the network across Europe, so you get, uh, as I said, this interfacing with industry as well. So you get to do a lot of experience outside just purely the academic research environment, and you get a lot of visibility at the forefront of what is happening with space exploration. So it's quite. It's quite a good place to be. You sort of realise not everybody gets this this view, so it's um, it's 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 a big bonus if you're really into the space <laughs> the space scene. So all of that sounds like really amazing. Is there anything bad about the fellowship that you can? <laughs> what was the most challenging part of it? Yeah, I found it a little bit challenging. Some of the route finding out, not being the science director, they got quite um. A bit more of a standardised program, a little bit more established for the science directorate. Whereas, it's it's a little bit finding your way still, but that's quite good because you can also then feed back into it lessons learned, and you can you can have a 
a place in shaping how it, it moves forward. It's also a little understanding that you might not be attaining the level of research that and the, the publication rate that if you really, really want to stay in that, that academic research route, you might suddenly start finding you're dropping behind some of your, your peers at a similar level. So if, if you really want the, the, the work experience side and you think you're going to go into that role, then it's really good for you. If you really, really are focused on wanting to do academia and research, then perhaps it might not be the best route because you, you could you could find your, your publication rate drops a little bit. So last two questions um, for those that are like really interested in being fellows, even after the bad side of things that you mm -hmm. said, when is the next call for fellows? They're being published and released um, um, all year long. There's no sort of specific campaign it, it comes up as a, and when there's kind of interesting projects or or areas that that would be really useful to have a research fellow brought in so do look out for for opportunities all the time i suppose the biggest release could be through the science directorate where they normally advertise positions um, towards the end of the year um so but yeah do do look around all, all year round for opportunities they do pop up so very last question if you had one piece of advice to someone who is applying or thinking of applying what would that be just do a little bit of research and do ask questions find other research fellows that are in the directorate that you has you're interested in and just just ask them learn about their experience just see if it is right for you for you um and also doing a bit of research it can help you find where there are synergies with your your interest and what is happening what projects are coming up so it can help not only with writing your application but then helps you be a bit more integrated once you actually get there as well and just don't be scared to ask questions even when you get to the interview phase as well yeah i think they like questions don't they okay so that's all the questions that i have for you today thank you so much for joining me on this call everyone this was francesca mcdonald previous ESA research fellow and now ESA staff um i hope you all found this as interesting and fascinating as i did let me know in the comment section below if you have any more questions for us and we'll get to them when we can and in the meanwhile if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave me a like share and subscribe